Hello, my name is Dennis, and welcome to my Trailer Park White Trash Mobile Home Kitchen. I really do live in a mobile home, in a trailer park, and this is my kitchen. At the request of a fan of my YouTube channel, I'm going to be making Spätzle today. Spätzle is like an Italian pasta. It's a German pasta. There are some differences. Italian pasta is eggs and flour. Spätzle has eggs, milk, and flour. They're both boiled. You can make Spätzle kind of firm, stiff, and then cut it with a knife like the Italian pasta, or you can make it softer, wetter, that you would push through the holes of a colander. I'm going to be using a potato ricer to shape my Spätzle. And like any pasta, Often the feature is the sauce. Spätzle is often served with a gravy. I'm going to be making a gravy with chicken stock, concentrated chicken stock, sliced mushrooms, fresh herbs, and I might thicken it up with a little bit of pre-cooked flour. I'll get into that when we get into the ingredients. So let's go right into the ingredients I'm going to be using for my Spätzle today. For the noodles, I have two and a quarter cups, that's about 12 ounces by weight, 340 grams, all-purpose flour, one half teaspoon salt, three large eggs, and then three quarters of a cup, 177 milliliters of whole milk. For my sauce slash gravy, I'm using two tablespoons, 28 grams of butter, two tablespoons extra virgin olive oil, 8 ounces, 227 grams of mushrooms. I'll be thinly slicing these. You need one half of a large onion sliced and caramelized. This here actually is my caramelized onion. When I need caramelized onions, I go to the freezer because I buy my onions in the big 10 pound bag at the warehouse store and I'll spend a couple of hours caramelizing the entire bag down and then I portion it into these portion little packets that are then frozen. This is about half of an onion here. So what you want to do to caramelize an onion, slice up an onion, saute it in butter and olive oil and or olive oil. Start off at medium high heat. As the water boils off and it starts to dry out a little bit, start reducing your heat and cook the onion for about 15 to 20 minutes until it's a nice golden color. That's caramelized onion. So again, I have a half of a caramelized onion here, large onion. And then in this packet, same thing, this is shallots. I did the same thing, I cut these up and then caramelized them. I need here about two medium shallots, sliced and caramelized. Then I have one half teaspoon salt, one quarter teaspoon ground pepper. I'm just gonna be grating some fresh black pepper into my mix one eighth of a teaspoon ground nutmeg. This is my nutmeg pod and my nutmeg grater. I'm just gonna be grating in some fresh nutmeg. You need three quarters of a cup, 177 milliliters of chicken stock. This is my homemade chicken stock that I've made in advance in frozen one cup portions. I'll be using three quarters of this. And then a generous pinch each of herbs that you like, your choice. I'm using fresh parsley rosemary, sage, and basil here. And then finally I have some cooked flour for thickening. I keep cooked flour in the cupboard. I'll put raw flour in a skillet, overheat, keep stirring it, and when it changes to a golden color I get it out of the skillet and let it cool and then put it in a jar and then I've always got cooked flour. You don't want to use raw flour when you thicken gravy because then you have that pasty raw flour flavor. Use cooked flour and you won't have that problem. So those are the ingredients I'm using for my spätzl today. I'm going to put my flour in my bowl here. My eggs. Break those yolks up a little bit. Add the salt. Oops. And my milk. And this should give me a fairly wet dough that can be squeezed through the holes of either a colander or, as I mentioned earlier, I'm going to be using my potato ricer. Okay, so there's my dough. You can see it is a wet dough. 
close to a batter there. I have water heating on the stove to boiling. I'm going to put this a little at a time into a potato ricer and then squeeze these noodles into the boiling water. My potato ricer comes with three different size screens and I'm using the largest screen today to force my batter through and that should give me the noodles that I want. While I'm waiting for my water to heat up, I'm going to start prepping some of my other ingredients. I'm just going to cut my mushrooms up, it's kind of thin slices like that. You get the picture? This is rosemary from my own garden. I pulled this, cut this off this morning. I don't want a lot, so I'm certainly not going to use this entire branch of rosemary. I'm just going to work with a little bit here, pull off my fresh needles, and then maybe a little bit more. And I want to just chop this up. Like so. It doesn't have to be too fine a chop. But enough to go into my gravy. Okay, that's good enough. And even then, as I'm looking at all of that, I might not use all of that. I said a generous pinch. That's more like two or three generous pinches. I'm only going to use three of my sage leaves. I love fresh sage, especially in stuffing. Sure, that's nicely chopped up, and again, that's that looks like an awful lot of sage. So I'll use whatever I think might be appropriate. So there's my sage. I've taken the leaves off of about ten stalks of parsley here. I've got an awful lot here. I'm going to put some of this in my gravy and some of this is going to be used for garnish at the end. And I am going to chop my parsley down rather fine. So I'll take a little more time with this than I do my other herbs. Now I have a confession to make here. One of the reasons why I bought basil is because I want to experiment with a ceramic knife that I bought. I'm stacking up my leaves here of my basil. Basil turns a dark color when it comes into contact with metal. I believe it's the ferrous oxides, or the ferrous rather molecules, the iron. So, I bought a set of ceramic knives. There's no metal in these. And supposedly this is supposed to give you a nicer colored basil. It'll stay a nice rich green. I'm cutting this very, very thin into a chiffonade. I think of chiffonade as being little threads and julienne as being little strings. Some of this is going to go into my gravy and maybe if I feel like it, I'll use some of this for garnish on the top. Now I'm seeing a beautiful green color here. I don't know how well it translates into a YouTube video, but my color is not changing at all. So I'm very happy with this ceramic knife. It's also very sharp. I've got water boiling on the stove. I have a colander set aside over another bowl, and then I have another bowl that I have prepared with butter. My spetzel is going to be cooked very quickly, so as soon as that's well cooked, a minute or two, I'm going to be taking it out and draining it, and then very quickly moving it from my colander over to my buttered bowl. 
So here is my ricer with my batter inside. I just want to squeeze my spetzel into the water like so. And then break that loose. There it goes. And then I just want to break that up. It's okay if you get water on the stove. And as that cooks, that will float to the surface like it's doing right now. Okay, my spetzel now has been cooking for a few minutes. I'm going to move this out to my colander and then I'll move it to my buttered bowl and I have another batch of dough to cook. So there's my spetzel that I have dressed with some butter. You can do this up to three hours in advance according to the recipe I'm using before you make your sauce. So my next step now is to make my sauce gravy for this. I've got my skillet heating on the stove. I'm going to put my olive oil in there and my butter. That's nicely heated up. And I'm going to add my mushrooms. If the oil gets soaked up, mushrooms are like sponges. I can always add more butter and oil to this. And I'm going to saute these over medium heat until they're tender. And I'll start adding my other ingredients. My mushrooms got nicely tender in only about three minutes. So now I'm going to start adding my herbs. I'm going to grind some black pepper in there. Nice, generous pinch of parsley. Sage. My chopped rosemary. And some of my chiffonade basil. And there is my caramelized onion and my caramelized shallot. Salt. As I mentioned earlier, I'm just going to grind some fresh nutmeg directly in there. Some spetzel, the nutmeg is actually ground right into the pasta itself. And then finally, this is my chicken stock. I took out about a quarter of that stock. That's still somewhat frozen, but that will obviously thaw out pretty quickly in that skillet. And then I'm going to cook this down a little bit to, to um, reduce that liquid some. So I'm going to raise my heat back up to kind of a medium high here to bring this up to a boil. And then I'm going to reduce the heat and simmer this just to reduce my liquid a little bit. I brought my heat up a little bit. Now I'm going to add my spetzel in there. Start turning this and coating this. The starch in that spetzel will finish thickening that sauce. I did taste that sauce for salt, by the way, and it was perfect. It didn't need any additional salt, and it was absolutely delicious from the herbs and the mushrooms. So this is going to be a delicious, excellent spetzel. Okay, so I'm just going to finish heating this up because that spetzel was cooled down. It sat for a while at room temperature. And then this will be ready to serve. Okay, to serve this, nice and hot from the skillet. Spetzel is 
usually served as a side dish, like instead of mashed potatoes. But this is so hearty and delicious, I think I can eat this as a main course. And then while a jet goes overhead, I'm going to garnish this with some extra chopped parsley. And there you have it, spetzel. The last step is to see how delicious that tastes. There it is, my spetzel. Going to get a nice taste of this. Wow. That is very good. It's got a nice savory flavor to it, but it's not strong. It's got kind of a delicate flavor for all those herbs, but even a bit of a buttery flavor. Hmm. Excellent. Okay. I forget who originally requested this from the YouTube videos, but hopefully this is something you can enjoy. As for me, I'm going to go enjoy my spetzel. For a printable PDF copy of this recipe with step-by-step -step photographs, visit the White Trash Cooking website and look on the home page or in the recipe archive.